Hello, everyone um, here in the Facebook Mastermind uh, group. Thank you so much for joining us tonight or listening in tonight. Um, we have scheduled 8 o'clock uh, for Harriet from Float over in Edinburgh to um, give us a talk on cash flow forecasting. Um, cash flow um, forecasting is a really uh, a great step to take if you are interested in, um, in, in advisory work. Uh, for many people who are getting um, their accounts reconciled um, and, and tidied up to a certain point, um, it's a really good uh, step to, to actually take. So hopefully um, you can join us tonight. And if you're interested in, you can see us, but if you're interested in participating um, or asking questions, you can actually post them along the side and I, I'm monitoring that. So Harriet's going to be running most of this, um, but I'll monitor questions and uh, um, let her know as they're coming in, um, see if she can uh, answer them. Um, and then, um, yeah, so we really appreciate that. So um, if I can hand over to you, Harriet, and uh, you can let people know what you care to talk about. Perfect. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much for inviting me on today. I'm really excited to be talking to you guys. Um, so yeah, so my name's Harriet. I work at Float Cashflow Forecasting. We're based in Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my slides with you. So I'm just going to click, click uh, to share my screen quickly. So hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm just going to um, hop hide my video there. Cool. Um, I'm just going to go into full screen. Is that working okay, Heather? Yes, it's gone up. Um, I can still see your video. So have you hidden oh. your? Okay, let me just stop that. There we go. So I did hide it there. So that... There we go. Cool. Um, so, so yeah, so as we all know, uh, compliance services are becoming um, more and more commoditized and automated by technology. So I really want to take a quick step back and just kind of talk about the wider and um, what's going on in the industry. So this, um, as we all know, gives accountants and bookkeepers the opportunity to move into the role of a trusted financial expert, um, and that helps clients make the most of their um, business decisions and make the best business decisions. So um, according to research from Zero, um, practices who provide app advisory services actually grow 60% faster than those who don't. And the same research also showed that SMBs who use cloud apps grow 30% faster than those who don't. So that's kind of what's happening in the wider industry. Uh, when, when you come to think about what are all the areas that your clients need your advice in, understanding their cash flow can be a huge part of that puzzle. Um, and when clients don't know what's going to be going on, it can cause a lot of stress and sleepless nights. Um, and historically, it's not been an easy problem to solve. Um, so the problem with manual cash flow forecasting is, as I'm sure you'll recognize something that looks a bit like this, it's hard to read, it's error prone, and crucially, it takes such a lot of time to create and update and maintain. Uh, and that means that uh, you do have to charge a bit more for this service, which makes it sometimes not affordable for your clients to take you up on it, even though most of them might desperately need to see a picture of their future cash. So how can you tackle that? One answer is to use a tool like Float. Um, we bolt right into Xero and QuickBooks Online to set up a forecast in minutes. As soon as you set up something exact, um, exactly how much cash you expect clients to spend and receive in the future, we keep that up to date automatically every day. And that means that uh, you will be able to do more cash flow forecasting much easier and much more quickly and make it more cost effective for your clients so that more of your clients can take you up on that service. So before I kind of jump into showing you guys about Float, I just wanted to kind of talk a bit about why accountants and bookkeepers are choosing Float. So um, Float will help you add value by helping your clients understand the future. Uh, and that will help you um, offer an affordable cash flow forecasting service which will then uh, help, help, help you kind of potentially open up a new revenue stream as well. And um, part of doing that will improve long-term client relationships as they become more engaged in their numbers overall. And that will help build towards um, becoming a go-to digital accountancy firm. And then finally, in turn, that will build your reputation and help you win new clients as the end goal there. 
So uh, jumping into a bit more about Float, uh, what is Float? So Float is an app that integrates with Xero, QuickBooks Online, and Free Agent to help you and your clients build really visual cash flow forecasts based on your or your client's best guesses and data imported from the accounting software. So we then automatically keep that up to date every 24 hours. So Float goes up to three years ahead and is best for short to midterm operational forecasting. We offer scenario planning to help clients answer what if questions. And Float is uh, really flexible, visual and easy to use. So we definitely recommend that it's something your clients can use themselves. Um, a bit more about the team. So Float's been around for a little while. We were founded in 2011 and we integrated with Xero in 2014 and with QBO in 2015. We're award-winning and uh, Float was built by a business owner, um, Colin Hewitt, who struggled with maintaining a spreadsheet-based forecast in his previous business um, and decided to build Float because of that pain. So we really do understand the difficulty and the um, kind of the pain of not knowing what's gonna be happening in your business in the future. So we're also rated five stars on the QBO and zero app stores as well. So uh, what makes Float a bit different? So we give you a, a real view of your cash. So Float is a tool aimed at being simple for business owners to use. Um, so we don't do a P&L or a balance sheet based forecast. It is just cash because that is more real to what's actually going to be happening in the business in the future. So with Float, your clients can see if they'll have a cash shortage next month that they need to cover or a cash surplus that they can reinvest. We're also all about cash management. So a huge part of Float is being able to manage upcoming cash movements. You can go into Float and change the date that you expect an invoice or a bill to be paid, and that then makes the forecast much more accurate. We also help you help your clients understand the business at a glance. So Float makes it really easy for your clients to see what's going to happen to their cash in the coming weeks and months, and they can then use Float to see very quickly whether their plans are feasible or not. Um, and where they need to take action using our scenario planner, which I will show you in just a minute. Um, and this would be very difficult to achieve with a spreadsheet. It's intuitive, it's really straightforward and easy to use. We take out the accounting jargon that comes with other tools on the market, leaving no barriers for your clients to easily understand the future cash position of their business. And we help you reduce data entry. Customers who used to spend one or two days a month on their cash flow forecast are able to reduce that to a matter of minutes with Float. As we import the data every day, once the forecasts are set up, we then take care of the rest. And finally, we help you track progress. One of the main problems with spreadsheets uh, in spreadsheet-based forecasts is that they don't stay up to date with incoming or outgoing cash. So our integration with the accounting software means that each day, all new transactions are automatically pulled through to float. We update cash budgets with actual cash in and out as the month progresses. All you need to do is click into a cell to see the progress towards or beyond a forecast. So how does Float work? I'm gonna just quickly jump over to my Float screen. I'm not gonna do a full demo today, but I would like to show you a few key highlights. Um, if anyone would like a full demo, you can email me at harriet at floatapp.com and I'll put my email address on the last slide as well so you can see that. Um, but yeah, so today I'm gonna to go through a couple of key points about Float. So um, here we are in the cash flow tab and hopefully everyone can still see my float screen. Um, so this, uh, this line here is the, the bank balance uh, going into the future. And that is actually based on the bank accounts that you're including from the accounting software. So you can choose which ones you want here. And that's gonna combine into this line. So you can see the past three months shaded it out kind of here and into the future as well. You can go up to three years ahead in the future and you can view this line on a daily, weekly or monthly basis as well. And you can jump back to today, just there. This amount here is telling you the total current cash balance in zero. And this will tell you if there's any amount that still needs to be reconciled up um, as well. And if you're using QuickBooks Online or Free Agent, this will say total matched cash. It's just, uh, just a couple of different kind of terminology things there. And we also show you a um, threshold here. So if you wanted to set a threshold when my cash falls below a certain point, your clients could come in here and set change that maybe to say 10,000, um, save that change, and then they'll see what date that that is predicted to happen based on their forecast. And if they've got an overdraft, you could have a negative number. So it's just kind of really handy way of just keeping an eye on um, how, how cash is going and if, if they need to take action. 
And these, this line here is based on the, a couple of things based on the bank accounts. It's based on also the forecast that you enter into float here, all of these numbers. And it's also based on the expected payment dates of upcoming invoices and bills. So I really want to show you these areas, invoices due and bills to pay. This is where the cash management side of float comes in. It's um, gonna let you come in and see all the upcoming invoices and bills here. So this is invoices we're in. So this is money that um, this client is owed. So they're owed a total of 5,230 pounds. And they're all from overdue invoices. But you can see there's a couple with red uh, exclamation points. That's because the expected date here is in the past. Whereas these are still overdue, but their expected dates are in the future. So um, crucially, this doesn't push back to the accounting software. So we want Float to be a safe place to model different hypothetical situations with the client's cash. So what you can do is you come in and change the date that you actually think something will be paid. So if the client actually knows, you know, actually they're going to pay in a week, let's just move that forward seven days. You can click on there, click that. You can do 30 days or you can choose a specific date. You can just use that graph there. Um, another thing you can do is you can search and, and, and edit them in bulk. So perhaps City Limousines has agreed to pay all of their outstanding invoices by the end of the month. You can choose set expected date and choose um, the, the last day of the month. But you can also add a number of days from the due date. So say they always pay 60 days late, just add 60 days on. So that's really handy. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it as the 31st. And those will now no longer be... Um, kind of called into um, being in red there. Um, so there we go. So those are now, there's no exclamation points to worry about here. These have all been pushed into the future. So a key part of using Float is to come in here and update these expected payment dates to keep the cash flow forecast being accurate. And as I said, it doesn't push back. Um, another thing that you can do is you can exclude any of these. So if your client's like, I just don't expect this, this person to pay or I've been chasing them for months and just want to don't just like not factor it in right now, you can not include it in the cash flow and it's just now excluded. You can also always re-include it. And again, that doesn't change any of the data in the accounting software. So the same thing goes for bills to pay. That's just money that this client owes. So you can do the exact same things here. Um, but it's really handy to see a list of what's coming up. And if anything does get paid and reconciled or matched, then it does leave this area. So this will always be kind of tidy and always just be the um, upcoming cash in and out. So that brings us on to forecasting. So if I scroll down below this graph here, we can see the chart of accounts broken into cash in and cash out. And these are all going to be unique to your client's um, accounting software um, chart of account categories. So we've got these all broken in. I've also created a couple of groups here. So I've grouped together our office costs and our payroll costs just to tidy up that graph, sorry, that table. Um, but yeah, so what you can do in here um, is it's really powerful. You can do a number of things. You can go into past months and actually see what has been paid. So if I open up November, I can see I'd actually expected 11,200 of sales, but I only received here 8,888. So you can click on and see, actually, I had a few of these Harry Potter themed uh, expectations of cash. And these are all entered in um, on a cash basis. So uh, when the client expects to receive that money and um, they've all added up here to 11,200, but I can see that I was actually paid um, 8,888. So you can actually click into these and get even more information. And that's all coming straight from the accounting software. Can I um, ask you a question, Harriet? Yeah, absolutely. As well as uh, being tailored for the magical industry, um, are, is Float tailored <laughs> for, for any specific industries, do you think? I think one of the great things about Float is that it can be used by anyone. So uh, it's as long as they have some form of invoices and bills in their accounting software, um, you can forecast into Float. We, we do have a lot of um, professional services using Float, um, creative agencies and things. I think typically where cash flow is quite lumpy tends to be um, that sort of sort of professional services sort of industry. But again, we have a lot of manufacturing um, companies, a lot of construction trades. Um, so it, it really depends. Um, and I couldn't really say, you know, Float's best for this industry because it can be useful in so many. Um, yeah. Thank you. So, 
No worries. So, um, so that's the kind of looking into the past element. So we can see what has happened in all of these. So basically you can see the, the expectation on the right and then on the number on the left is what really happened. And when we minimize this, you'll see the, the actual transactional amount that was really paid. You can always go back and see what the budget was. Um, and then into the future, I can show you our uh, sales here. Um, so again, we've got a few of these and they're at different amounts on different dates. Um, so I can show you how we create a new one. And again, this is a cash expectation and not an accruals budget. So my favorite one is doing a Dobby Socks one. Um, we can do um, maybe like 500 and you can say whether that's one off or repeating. And you can have it be repeat every week, every two weeks, every month, every quarter or every year. If you do a weekly or bi-weekly, you can choose the day of the week. And if you choose a monthly one or a quarterly one, you can choose the, um, the date that that happens. So I'm going to do uh, a, a weekly one and I'm going to choose uh, every Friday. So I'm going to create that and that's going to add itself up. There we go. So we've got the results and that totals 2000. So it's four weeks in this month or Friday, four Fridays in this month. So that totals up to 13,200 there. And then we can see what's due towards that. So we've got about 2,000 worth of upcoming invoices here. And again, you can click into these and get drilled down into all of that detail that you would not get in the spreadsheet. Uh, and again, here you can actually change the date straight from here that you expect it to be paid and you can exclude or include from here as well. And we don't have any paid yet, but if you did have any transactions actually paid, you'd see that here too. So that's really how the forecasting works uh, in Float. We can also do um, what's called spreadsheet input here. So we can click on here and here you can copy and paste a forecast. If you have it outside of Float already in a spreadsheet, you can copy and paste it right in. So you can grab a whole line and paste it straight there. Um, and you can also type different amounts in, it just makes it much quicker to navigate through and you can drag to the right and down and so on, much like a spreadsheet. It has a so very easy to use interface, doesn't it? And it's, it's quite visually yeah. stunning, um, the, the, the <laughs> design. Um, yeah, we really want it to be really straightforward. Your clients can come in and say, oh, okay, well, this, my cash is going up into the right, that's great. Or if it's going into the red, then they know that they need to take action. And that actually brings us nicely onto our scenario planning feature. Um, so this is kind of where a lot of people kind of get their light bulb moment with Float. It's like, oh, okay, so I can model this thing. So scenario planning is really handy for, for seeing the cash impact of any of your clients' future plans. And I'm sure that they all have plans for the future. So this is a really simple one that I had previously done for a new employee. So you can see on the graph instantly what the impact would be of hiring someone new. And you can see what I did here. If I go down, I can expand out my payroll group and see, okay, so I added an amount for a new PA. 3,000 a month on top of our existing salaries expectation as well. In the UK, we have a couple of um, payroll related taxes to pay as well. So I did those too. And then if you go back up here, you can see the impact and you can go up to three years ahead to see the longer term impact of that. Again, you can view this daily, weekly or monthly, that just kind of smooths out the line a bit. So you could really do this for anything. Um, so if I just delete this, we can create a brand new one. You could do it for a sales dip. Um, so you can add a scenario layer um, and uh, create that there. So we can say, okay, what happens if we actually don't get everything that we expected? Um, so, you know, for instance, I can exclude this one, all, this and all future months here and see that the impact of that. Um, and maybe we'll also exclude a couple more to say, okay, well, wh what happens if, you know, these not so sure things don't actually come to pass? So we can see that the impact of that there and this orange line will show you the impact of that over time. So it will be going, you know, slowly into the red by um, towards the end of next year if that if those two didn't happen. Um, so yeah, it's hopefully really straightforward and um, an easy way for clients to come in and see you know, I'm thinking about doing this thing or I'm worried that this thing might happen. Let's see the impact of that uh, visually on a graph. And um, it just really helps. And many business owners are visual people. They're not super numbers focused. So being able to show them a picture of this can be really powerful. 
Um, really quickly before I finish up here, I also wanted to show you our daily breakdown. So if you did see a dip into the red or anything that you wanted to narrow down on, you can set your date range here. You can also go into the past to see what has happened. But so we can say, okay, let's look up until the end of January here. And you can see the all of the ins and outs, including the budgets that you entered into float. Um, and the, the date that they're happening, the category, and how the bank balance has been affected. So for any clients that are looking to kind of monitor their cash pretty closely, this is really handy. Um, so some people do ask for a weekly forecast, and I think that this might help towards that um, to really see really in a really granular level what's happening. And you can also exclude the, the budget, so you're only now seeing the expected cash coming in from invoices and bills going out. So you can also view this on a scenario basis too. And it tells you the amount. So if we re-included those forecasts, obviously this changes. Uh, so yeah, super handy. Um, we do also have um, our own report. So if you did want to export float to a PDF or a CSV, you can do that here. Um, export to a PDF and it will download for you just then and there. Which um, is really handy to just give to the client. Yeah, so if you had any client who you know wasn't super comfortable using float, uh, on, on screen, they can just receive this, this PDF uh, export that gives them the summary and then the full breakdown as well and the graph at the top. Um, we also have a reporting tab that we're still working on, but here you can set your date range basically. So if they were looking, you know, next three months or even just show, show them December, you can just do that too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and cash flow is such a stress over um, December, January time. It yeah, can be totally. such a busy period for some people but such a quiet period for other people and uh, it gives yeah. them um, the ability to manage that through that. Um, I have quite a detailed question for you. Harry. Okay, go for it. Um, yes. Michelle has a client who pays a 30% deposit for goods that will be delivered three months later. So he pays okay. a 30% deposit, they'll be delivered in three months. The goods arrive and are paid for before the arrival then the goods are sold to the retailer shop and paid for in 30 days. So, so you kind of, I think that's almost um, to some extent consignment stock in that you pay for it, but then you don't pay for the final amount until it's actually been sold. Mm -hmm. Are you able to account for that? Yeah, so, so that is a tricky one. We do have the ability to divide up an invoice or a bill into um, different parts. So I can show you how that would work. So if I, let me just grab one where there's an actual invoice here. So if I grabbed one of these, I can add a new payment on. The one thing is with Float currently, it divides it up into equal parts. Oh, so okay. um, you could sort of do it so that, you know, you divide it up and then you, you know, make all of them on one day. So you could have like two of them be on uh, the same day and then, um, you know, kind of change it a bit about like, like, like that, but it's not going to be... Um, probably exactly what the, the person who has the question is wanting. No. Um, like a 30 yeah. 70% split. Um, I guess yeah, she, that's, she could split it into 10 and then yeah. put the first and then three on the same day seven. and then the last three on the, 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 the date. And then I don't yeah. know where 30 – oh, she pays for the final. Yeah, so the first three would be on one date and then the last yeah. seven would be on another date. Mm, another date. Yeah, so you could kind of do it like that. It would be a little bit, if it, if it happens all the time, it might be a bit annoying to have to do. Um, but th yeah, that is one way of doing it. Yeah. And she can put a feature request in, I guess, as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I will take that back to the team for sure. <laughs> and, and what's the process for putting a feature request in? Yeah. So we have, we use something called product board. So um, anytime that the, a feature request comes in, we uh, email it to that. And then our product manager sort of sorts it out and codes it all. And that really informs our roadmap. Um, so yeah, anytime anyone has a future request, we really encourage uh, them to let us know because that's how we decide what to do next. Yeah. Um, cool. Any more questions, Heather? No, she said thank you to that one. <laughs> okay. Fab. Um, so I was just going to show you also a bit about our partner program if we still have a bit of time. Um, and um, I did have a, I did actually have a, a case study from um, Steph Hines. I'm not sure if this will play, but I, I have tried it before on previous presentations as well. So I can have a quick go at that. It's only in a minute, 40 seconds, I think. Um, but if not, just let me know, Heather, and I'll, and I'll pause it.
but not getting the sound. Ah, okay. No worries. <laughs> and um, can cool. you adjust your sound? It might just be because it's through my headphones, but yeah, you know what? I can send it to you, Heather, and if anyone wants to see it, um, they can they can absolutely do that. Okay. Um, so you. I'm just going to X out of this. Cool. There we go. Um, but yeah, so basically this is one of the things that Steph Hines said. So Float allows us to offer a completely different service set, which brings us more revenue, but more importantly, our clients have an up-to-date, have up-to-date numbers and they know exactly what they can and can't do. And I think that's really crucial. And that's one of the key selling points of Float is that just giving your clients peace of mind really uh, to yeah. what's going to be happening in the future and in a way that they can understand um, and really interact with and rely on. Um, so yeah, uh, so our partner program, um, we, we launched this um, a couple of years ago. So we have a partner program for invoice uh, for um, bookkeepers and um, accountants. And um, it gives you a free license for your own firm. It also gives you more functionality. So each of your clients gets the equivalent of our large plan. Uh, we also offer support and training. And then if you go for one of our higher plans, we offer dedicated account management as well. So um, we, I would really encourage you, if you're curious to test Float out, you can use the free account um, for your firm until you're ready to start adding a client and, and start paying. So you can get that at floatapp.com forward slash partners. And uh, this is the pricing here. So I've got a couple of different currencies. If anyone is in a different um, area and needs a different currency, you can just send me an email. And I'll put, again, I'll put my email at the end. Uh, so, but yeah, the first the first client basically is pay as you go, as, as is the second and up to the fourth client. Uh, so once you get to your fifth client, you kind of go into these fixed pricing tiers. But basically, your fifth client is only incrementally the same amount as an, as a as your other ones but it um, then gives you five extra licenses on top of that. Uh, so it really becomes cost effective um, the, more you, the more you add. Uh, but yeah, if anyone is, is curious to test it out, I would recommend that you, you, you do the free kind of the free license there. Um, so they join as a partner and even, yeah. if they have, even if they have no clients, they can still get a free license. Totally. To so yeah. it's totally worth trying it out on your own mm -hmm. company. And mm -hmm. testing it which is always um the way i do it um and for yeah. people listening in look i, I i've um, gone through and set up float and honestly 12 minutes probably to set it up like it's it's hardly any time at all and but then you've got some refinement on it but it's a very very quick setup and and uh, quite powerful the information you get um and the opportunity to access a free license if uh, you are a zero uh, if you're a partner um is uh, too easy <laughs> cool thanks Ella. um but yeah that's pretty much it from me um if anyone has any more questions please do fire them through yeah um, i was i was um sorry sorry to interrupt you. sorry go ahead <laughs> no i was just gonna say this is my this is our contact details if anyone wants to our website is floatapp.com and you can email me at harriet at floatapp.com as well Thank you so much, um, Harriet, for your presentation. And uh, we'll see if any uh, more questions come through. Yeah. Um, I was thinking this morning, um, as I was uh, just to, to jump into something completely different, as I was <laughs> going to um, walk my dog, my dog was standing by my legs and he won't go anywhere until I put his lead on. And as soon as Aww. I put his lead on, he, he yanks and the, the lead's about six metres long. So he just yanks me. Um, but he <laughs> will go off and explore if he's on a lead, but if he's not on mm -hmm. a lead, he won't. And I was kind mm -hmm. of thinking that uh, as a, an accountant helping someone um, with cash flow forecasting, it can almost be like that in terms of um, because we can do these scenarios, we can actually test what the possibilities are. So some mm -hmm. um, business owners are quite rightly so risk averse, but you, you, you're actually giving them that leeway to test um, where they can actually push their business. Yeah, that's such a good analogy. I like it. <laughs> Not sure about the collar thing, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, um, that that's a really good point. Yeah, it, yeah. it really gives them, it gives them the kind of the peace of mind that you you're helping them set set it up, and then it, once it's all kind of in place, and they can go and and really see what the impact would be of different of different situations for their cash. 
Yeah, and I think the um, the scenario planning um, and the scenario opportunities is um, um, a really useful feature in Float. Um, but I, I really want to stress to people most of the um, from the the bookkeepers who can reconcile through to trial trial balance. This is really something that can be that next step that uh, it, it can be um, something that you can actually really tackle if you're looking to do something more. Um, and I think for, for the accountants who are looking to move into advisory, um, it's a no brainer um, looking at cash flow forecasting analysis. I think um, I, I always say get your chart of accounts correct, um, look at getting projects or tracking or jobbing or whatever you want, get that correct. But from, from that point, um, once you're, you're reconciled to trial balance, this is such a, a natural next step um, with clients. Um, oh, I've had another question through. Is there a trial for clients so we can see how their data feeds in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a 14 day free trial. Your clients could come in and, and use that. And then if you are happy to go forward, we can move them onto your partner account. Oh, no excellent. Oh, okay, that, yeah. that, that's again too easy. So hopefully um, <laughs> that sorts it out for, uh, for that question there. Okay. Oh, well, thank you um, again, Harriet. If anyone has any other questions, um, if they can um, throw them out, but it doesn't seem so seem like it, um, but they have your contact details so they can yeah. get in contact with you. Um, and this stays here in the Facebook group so people can watch it. But thank you um, oh. very much, Harriet. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. Cheers. Cheers, bye.